Welcome to another session of Fundamentals of Financial Management. I, Dr. Neha Seth, working in the capacity of Associate Professor with Symbiosis Institute of Business Management, NOIDA, a constituent of Symbiosis International Deemed University. And today, I am going to discuss with you another topic and we call it Capital Budgeting. What is Capital Budgeting? In fact, what is Budgeting? So, Budgeting is something in which we decide in advance that what is our income and how we are going to spend our income, how much we are we have earned and how we are going to spend this amount, how much amount we are going to save and how much amount we are going to consume. The same thing is applicable in the case of businesses. Okay. Businesses earn in the form of profit, but they have to decide well in advance that how they are going to spend this amount for growth of business. Now, suppose a business or uh, um, as a businessman, I want to purchase a machinery or maybe I want to start a new project. I have to decide well in advance that how much cost this project is going to bear, okay, how much I have to spend to start a new project and how much I am going to earn out of that project in the coming years, okay. If the investment is less than what I am going to earn back then only the project is profitable, otherwise I have to think about it, okay. I may have to change the project or maybe I have to drop the project. So, these kind of decisions are known as capital budgeting decisions or we also call them investment decisions, right. So, this is what we are going to discuss today. So, when I talk about the specific definition of capital budgeting. So, capital budgeting decision may be defined as the firm's decision to invest its current funds most efficiently in long term assets with the anticipation of expected flow of benefits over series of years. Okay. As I said, we are investing today, but we are expecting return for number of years. Okay, so, we have to be very, very careful while taking these kind of decisions. Okay. These kind of decisions or capital budgeting decisions includes expansion, acquisition, modernization and replacement of long term assets. Okay. So, the focus will be on long term assets. Okay. The method of sales distribution, advertisement campaigns or our R&D programs may also have long term implications. Therefore, these are also treated as capital budgeting decisions or we can also call them investment decisions. Okay. So, from the definition we can draw certain features of these investment decisions. What are these features? These features can be what, what all is involved in these kind of decisions. So, this kind of decision involve basically exchange of current funds for future benefits. We are foregoing funds today because we are expecting benefits in coming years. Funds are invested in long term assets. Since we are considering this investment for number of years, that means we are considering long term investment for uh, taking capital budgeting decisions. Then future benefits will occur to, to the firm over number of years. Since we are investing in long term assets, we are expecting the benefit, we are expecting the return for number of years to come, right. And with this, we may extract the importance of investment decisions. Why investment decisions are important? Because it influences firms growth in long term. So, what would be the direction of firms growth, okay, whether it is going up or we are not able to meet the budgeted targets, this may be drawn, the influence may be drawn with the help of investment decisions. Effect, it, these kind of decisions affect the risk of the firm. What is the risk level of the firm? How we can reduce the risk level of the firm? These kind of decisions, investment decisions can be helpful in reducing risk of the firm as well. Investment decisions involve commitment of large amount of fund. So, a huge amount need to be invested. Okay, this is not about the day to day expenditure because here we are considering long term assets. Now, buying, purchasing or installing long term assets needs huge amount of fund. So, 
So that is why these decisions are really thoughtful decisions. We have to think many times, we have to do multiple calculations while taking these kind of decisions. Also these decisions are irreversible. Once these decisions are taken, we cannot reverse it. Okay, suppose we have bought a machinery which might cost a huge amount, say 10 lakh rupees. So it is not possible for me to return that machinery to, uh, to the vendor from whomsoever I have purchased it. And if it is somehow possible for me to return that, I have to suffer substantial losses, huge losses I have to suffer. Okay? So these kind of decisions are basically either irreversible or if reversible, then we have to suffer substantial losses. And these are considered to be the most difficult or complex decisions to make because of these reasons. So we need to be very careful when we are taking our investment decisions. Okay? Then there are certain rules that we need to follow when we are taking investment decisions or we can say there are certain points that we should keep in our mind when we are taking investment decisions. Okay? These points should be like when we are taking these decisions, these decisions should maximize the shareholder's wealth. You can recall or you can refer to the previous sessions where we talked about maximization of shareholder's wealth. So while taking investment decision, we should keep in our mind that the, the impact of decision should be such that the shareholder's wealth should be maximized. These decisions should consider all cash flows to determine the true profitability of the project. Okay. And investment decisions should help in ranking of projects according to their true profitability. So the calculation sh should be such that if I am having more than two projects with me, two, three or four or maybe more projects. So first of all, I am able to decide whether if there is only one project, whether I need to accept it or reject the project. And if there are more than uh, two projects with me, then I should be able to rank the projects that which one, which pro project out of the available project is the best one, second best and so on. So investment decisions actually help us in ranking the projects according to their profitability. They also provide an objective and unambiguous way of separating good projects and bad projects. So we can separate, there should be a number, a decision making factor that we should have which separate or which can distinguish between good projects and bad projects. Okay? Then investment decisions should recognize the fact that bigger cash flows are preferable to smaller ones and early cash flows are always preferable to the later one. This is also we have discussed in previous sessions okay? that I prefer as an investor, I prefer to receive my money today. Okay? So we should consider or the investment decisions or the criteria that we are using for taking investment decision, it should recognize this that it is always preferred by investor to receive bigger cash flows that to as early as possible. Okay? So this is possible when we are considering investment decisions or the criteria that are useful for investment decision. The investment decision should also be helpful in choosing among mutually exclusive projects, that project which makes the maximize or which maximize the shareholders wealth. So investment decision should be helpful in maximizing the shareholders wealth as well. Now when I am talking about uh, the criteria that are used for taking investment decisions, so these criteria are majorly divided into two parts or there are two criteria in which these uh, investment decisions are divided. These are non-discounting techniques where the cash flows are not discounted and then we have discounting cash flow techniques where the cash flows that we are receiving are discounted for time value of money. Okay? So when we are considering non-discounted cash flows, there are two methods that we are going to discuss today that, are, that is uh, payback period and accounting rate of return. And when we will discuss discounted cash flows method or discounting techniques, we will see net present value, IRR and profitability index. So let us see these methods, these criteria one by one. <coughs> Let's start with the very first one which is a non-discounting technique. We call it payback period. 
okay the word itself pay back it means how early you are going to get your money that you have invested in a project how early you are going to get this money back so basically payback is the number of years required to recover the original cash outlay invested in the project so basically it gives us the time period in which you are going to recover the amount that you have invested in a project and payback can be computed by dividing cash outlay by annual cash inflow this can be seen in the formula which is visible on the screen where payback is equal to initial investment divided by annual cash inflow okay we will also uh, see this with the help of example a numerical example i am going to discuss after this first of all we need to understand what is the acceptance rule when we are considering payback period so the project would be accepted if the payback period is less than the maximum or the standard payback period set by the management okay suppose the management uh, today we have made some kind of investment and the management decided that the payback period or we expect the amount to be recovered in 5 years okay now we are evaluating the project now this project is going to give us the payback or the payback period for this project is say 4.5 years so this is less than the standard um, uh, time period which was estimated by the management so we will accept the project now if the time period of recovery of investment is more than 5 years we are going to reject the project okay and if we are comparing two or more project so the project with the minimum payback period is the best one okay this is how we are going to rank the projects okay. so ranking when we are considering uh, considering ranking method it gives the highest ranking to the project which has the shortest payback period and for mutually exclusive projects we are going to accept the one with the shorter payback period okay so let us discuss this payback period with the help of numerical example first of all we will see the condition where the payback period is calculated when the cash flows that we are receiving are similar or we can say we are receiving equal cash flow for whatsoever time period we have made the investment now if a project which generates equal or constant cash inflow for years the payback period can be calculated by dividing cash outflow uh, by annual cash flow that we are receiving okay this is the example which is available on your screen based on equal cash flows for payback period now if a machine has an initial investment of 50 lakh rupees so it is clearly indicated that the cash outlay is 50 lakh rupees and it generates an annual cash inflow of 10 lakh rupees for 5 years now what will be the payback period this is the simplest possible example by putting the values in the formula where payback period is equal to initial investment divided by annual cash flow the initial investment is 50 lakh rupees and annual cash inflow is 10 lakh rupees so 50 lakh divided by 10 lakh is 5 years so the payback period for this project is 5 years so this is how we can calculate payback period so in the case of unequal cash flows the payback period can be found by adding the cash inflows until the total is equal to initial cash outlay so we will add the inflows up till the cash inflow is equal to cash outflow okay let us understand this with the help of example okay so this is the condition this is a project which is visible on the screen okay in this case there is a machine that the company has bought and the inflow will be like this where in the first year the company received 5 lakh in second year 7 lakh in third year 4 lakh fourth year also 4 lakh and fifth year also this company has received 4 lakh rupees now if this machinery cost rupees 10 lakh okay the initial investment is 10 lakh then how long will it take to recover the amount okay so how we are going to solve it we will first make a table and we will place the numeric values which are given in the question in the table like two columns first two columns shows the uh, the values which are derived from the question itself okay in the third column now we are going to add these values one by one to get the cumulative cash inflows so in first year the 5 lakh will remain 5 lakh but in seven uh, second year this 7 lakh will become 
12 lakh by adding 5 lakh the investment uh, the inflow of previous year to the current year's inflow. Okay. So, 5 lakh plus 7 lakh is 12 lakh, 12 lakh plus 4 lakh is 16 lakh, 16 lakh plus 4 lakh is 20 lakh, 20 lakh plus 4 lakh is 24 lakh. But what was the initial investment? Initial investment was 10 lakh rupees. So, that means our investment is going to be recovered somewhere between first and second year. Okay. Somewhere between first and second year. Now, what will be the exact time? Okay, this is something tentative that I am telling between one and se first and second year. But what is the exact time when we are going to recover our 10 lakh rupees? Okay, this can be done with the help of the calculation. Now, in this case, our payback period will be one year, that means first year, which is going to give us 5 lakh plus 10 lakh our initial investment minus 5 lakh the amount that we have recovered in first year. This amount is divided by 12 lakh, this is the amount that we have recovered till the end of second year minus the amount recovered in first year that is 5 lakh rupees. Now, by solving this equation, we get the value 1.71 years. Now, by converting this 0.71 into years or months, we will get the exact amount or exact time period is 1 year, 8 months, 16 days. So, exactly in 1 year, 8 months and 16 days, this company is going to recover 10 lakh rupees that they have invested in the beginning. Okay? Now, when we are talking about advantages or some limitations of payback period, we can see say that uh, when we are talking about advantages, this is the most simplest method for calculation. It covers the risk and it indicates the liquidity of the company as well. But there are certain limitations like it ignores the cash flows that are received after payback period. Now, whatever amount that we are receiving after payback period is ignored. It is ignoring time value of money because it is not discounting the cash inflows that we are receiving. It also ignores the salvage value and the life of the project. Right? So, this was the first method. Another non-discounted method is accounting rate of return. The accounting rate of return is the ratio of the average after tax profit divided by the average investment. Okay? This can be presented in the form of formula like this where ARR accounting rate of return is equal to average income divided by average investment. In numerical terms, if you want to present the formula, the formula will look like this where our ARR is equal to summation of EBIT 1 minus T, T represents tax, EBIT is earning before interest and tax. Okay? That is our profit or returns. The whole value will be divided by N which is number of years and this whole value will be divided by I O I N initial investment and investment thereon divided by 2 to get average investment. right? And the acceptance rule in case of ARR will be that we are under ARR method, we are going to accept all those projects whose ARR is higher than the maximum rate established by the management and we are going to reject those projects which have ARR less than the minimum rate. So, if the management has decided suppose that we need 10 percent return. Okay. Now, your investment is giving you 8 percent return. Okay, so, you are going to reject the project, but if the investment is giving you 11 percent return, which is more than 10 percent, you are going to accept the project. Now, this is the case when there is only one single project, but if there are more than one projects, in that case, this is the case of mutually exclusive projects. In this case, we are going to accept the one with the higher ARR and this is how we can rank the projects using ARR. Okay, now, let us see this with the help of example. Now, the particulars of a printer are visible on the screen here, where the purchase price of the printer is rupees 22,000, the salvage value is 2,000, working capital is 4,000, the service life of this printer is 5,000. Now, the company is using straight line method of depreciation. Now, if this average income of this from this printer is rupees 32,000 and the company's cutoff rate, the standard rate of return is 80 percent. Now, we have to state whether the project is acceptable or not. 
Now, we will do our calculations. Okay. The formula says return divided by investment. Return we already have that the this printer is giving us average income of 32,000. So, we already have the numerator that we need to place in the formula. We need to calculate average investment. Now, by simple accounting rule, our average investment is equal to net working capital plus salvage value plus average of initial cost of machinery minus any salvage value. By placing the values which were given to us in this formula, we have 4000 plus 2000 and average of 22000 minus 2000. Now, by solving this equation, we get the average income is 16000. Okay. Now, we will put this value in our formula of accounting rate of return. So, 32000 that is average income divided by 16000 which is our average investment, the value we get for ARR is 200 percent which is 120 percent more than the standard cutoff rate. Okay. Now, since our ARR is more than our cutoff rate, we are going to accept this project. Right? And when we are considering the merits of ARR, we can see that this ARR method is very simple in terms of calculation. It is based on accounting profits. So, profits which are given in books, we can use these numbers to calculate ARR. But when we are considering the limitations, the cash flows are ignored in this case. We are considering accounting profit, but the cash flows are ignored time value of money is not considered and of course, the life of the project is not considered for the calculation. So, these were the limitations of ARR method. With this, I am going to stop here for now. The non-discounting methods are discussed so far, but discounting method will be discussed in coming sessions. Happy learning.